sikati so kuhlala uya khona po uya uzolala my name is Manja. I'm a multimedia performance artist and musician based here in Berlin. Uh, I am 23 years old and I'm a gender non-conforming trans feminine body. I'm also a part of the House of Living Colors, which is a BIPOC performance house here in Berlin, which is aimed at creating space and uh, creating events for BIPOC people in town. And besides that, I am also a bad bitch. Can I swear? Yeah! Oh, this is it! <laughs> I'm also a bad bitch and I also like to intersect uh, social political spaces here in Berlin. I think uh, in the body that I inhabit it's a little difficult for me to not uh, intersect those spaces um, but I've also realized um, just how my body, I, I'm, I'm a lot more critical about how my body intersects these spaces and I have a lot more conversation about them too, specifically uh, uh, black and uh, trans spaces here in Berlin, which speak about uh, trans inclusion uh, and trans sensitivity, um, as well as trans opportunity and access in this town, and also the same for black bodies, specifically black immigrant bodies. Um, as a black immigrant, a black trans immigrant, um, I'm realizing with living in Berlin that my life naturally does intersect a lot of situations a lot of struggles and a lot of uh, perspectives and it's sometimes really hard to ignore that so lately i've really tried to also immerse myself a lot more in what it means for me to exist here and how i can also change that for myself as well as for other people in whatever minor way i can i've been really able to to successfully intersect a couple of the performance spaces too uh, and also giving the example of house living color that was a very uh, open space for me to be and it was very welcoming and it was one of the first spaces I felt in Berlin which had a very genuine approach to accepting people uh, into their spaces as well as creating spaces for those bodies to be in specifically and I think that's also very important it's not just like creating a, a sense of community for these people to be in but also creating safe spaces for that community to inhabit um, and another safe space too in Berlin that I've been able to be in which has aided in a lot of growth in me as a person socially and politically has been uh, One World Poetry which is held by Lai Alfongo and it is a safe uh, performance space for BIPOC people to come and share uh, their experiences with their life, their experiences with their race, their experience with their identity, their traumas um, and it's always been such a beautiful space where everyone is incredibly respectful of where they are and those have been some of the spaces just as an example off the top of my head of um, places in this town that have been able to really offer genuine and natural inclusion for my identity. The, the transformation of my music and, and the themes that my music speaks about also I think change, um, changed as I also found a lot of other discoveries about myself. Um, for me, the best type of music and the uh, the music I love to listen to is music that is very representative of people's uh, mental state and uh, emotional state and physical state at that particular time. Um, so with being an immigrant too and coming from Zimbabwe and planting myself in a majority white place, my race became a lot more apparent to me than it was back at home. So therefore themes around my race became something more to speak about in my music than it was before. Um, and with uh, more... Um, of the metamorphosis of my identity and the transformation and evolution of that too, a lot of things started to become a lot more apparent to me and a lot more important to speak about. Um, and lately, my music has transformed from like a couple of years ago, and I'm 23 now, so a couple of years I was five. And um, <laughs> no, but a couple of years ago, when I was like 19 or 18, my music mostly spoke about what was sensationalized for me at that time as a, as a, as a teenager, which was love and which was emotion. Um, but the last couple of years, my work has turned into a lot more, uh, if not reflective stuff about what my social political standing is, it's also other people's social political standing. So I also put in a lot of politics into my uh, performances, um, into my music, specifically in the lyrics and the themes, but also in performance because um, I have been able to find a way to incorporate uh, ideas of performance art and drag and music into uh, the work that I do and that aids in me being able to have different avenues through projections or through spoken word pieces or through, sp um, through text and literature which allows me to be able to convey multiple, um, multiple multiple aspects of things that I want to convey instead of just like lyrically through music. So things have really ch like transformed for me. I think I also really love to represent where I am mentally in my music and um, it's also helped like change and transform my music and performance as it's gone on because the things I'm thinking about at that moment are things I'm going to create.
create art about i think if, yeah if that makes sense commodifying my art has been a very confusing process for me um i'm also still fairly young so there's things about my career and the performance industry and theater industry that i do uh, that I'm a part of and that I do intersect where I'm realizing as a black performer or as a black body in theater there's just specific things that need to happen for you to be seen as worthy enough of a specific amount of compensation so when I did start performing and when I did start theater um, and when I did start performing in Cologne and when I did start performing in Berlin um, a lot of the things that I was being paid was not anywhere near enough or what I felt like was worthy of what my art was giving. But you can't really challenge that as a black artist sometimes because they really will ask like, where are your credentials? Like, um, what's on your CV? Where have you performed? Why should we pay you this amount of money? So it doesn't really come up to your art being great, but whether or not other people have validated that art is great, specifically those other people being white institutions. So the first time that I got a paycheck, which felt like it was worthy of my worthy of the work that i put into it was um when i had worked enough in white institutions that it was on my cv and then people felt like because that was on my credentials i was worthy enough as an artist to be paid that amount so it was a bittersweet feeling because i felt like yes i'm very grateful to finally have this money and have this amount of access and space but also made me realize that the way i got this access and space was incredibly skewed and that a lot of other people don't have the same amount of access and space to be able to get this compensation. But as my, I don't know, as, as, a, as an artist, as a black artist, as a, as a black trans artist, um, there's so many things about your art where you feel like you can't commodify it to where it really needs to be. And I think it's also just another thing that also lets you know how the German performance industry sees just uh, the idea of black bodies and black art in itself, because there have been many moments and maybe contextually just speaking specifically about Berlin, because I live here, where I see a lot of mediocre white queer artists um, and mediocre white drag artists and white musicians who don't put in as much work into their concepts, into their visions and into their execution and they are trusted before any credentials to be able to give and put on a good show. Whereas black bodies and bodies of color are specifically, you know, given a harder time and it's very difficult for them to, to infiltrate these spaces. So there's a lot of art and there's a lot of artists in Berlin who are creating amazing work but are never seen. And the stages are still being given to the same people. There's the same rotation of people every single time um, with no real showing that they deserve to be there. the thought a point of no return doesn't um necessarily have like a negative connotation to it as what it would usually in my mind where it feels like you cannot go back to something if something is bad which is in front of you but more so i think it also signifies a point of significant transformation where you can't ever go back to how you were before whether this is creatively whether this is like emotional whether it's personal um, the point of no return is getting to that final place of understanding where everything makes so much sense that what was lived before just can't be returned to and can't be ever understood. And um, that's some of the things I've been experiencing in my life and in my art lately too. Um, with my identity and with understanding who I am, that was a point of no return in the sense that I, would, I could never go back or look at myself the way I was in the past. And with my music and how it has transformed, and how important that is for me and my performance and the connections of people I've met through that has has meant so much to me that living any kind of life or making music in any other kind of way or the way I was before just doesn't seem like a place that I can go to. <laughs>